Okie dokie. So this is going to be a fun video. In this video, we're going to go ahead and use Newton's second law um, and apply it to sim simple harmonic motion and prove why something moving in simple harmonic motion has the function x of t equals a cosine omega t or x of t equals a sine omega t. We'll also prove the relationship between omega and k and derive the period of a simple spring oscillating in simple harmonic motion. Okay, so just to kind of warm us up, what I want you to do is go ahead and look at um, a, B, C, D, and E below. And what I want you to do is go ahead and on your own find the second derivative of each function. Um, and then check back in on the video and I'll go ahead and do it on here too. Okay, so first derivative of A is just 2T. And again, you've tried this yourself first. If I take the derivative once more, it's just going to be 2. Okay, derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine of T. I take the derivative once more. Negative cosine of t is the second derivative. Let's see. First derivative of e to the t, this is fun, um, with respect to t again, is just going to be e to the t. I take the derivative once more. I'm just left with e to the t. That's fun. Um, next one, take the derivative of t. That's just 1. Take the derivative of it again. That's just 0. Okay, this one, first, so this is kind of like b. Um, but now I'm just going to have to use this chain rule. So this is just going to be negative a, um, essentially negative a sine omega t, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside, which is just omega. So that's negative a omega sine of omega t. Take the derivative once more. The constants stay out front. Also do the chain rule and pull out another omega. So this is just negative a omega times omega cosine omega t, or I can call that negative a omega squared cosine omega t. Cool. So now let's go ahead and get started in our good old proof. Uh, great. So again, this is Newton's second law for simple harmonic motion, and we are proving these two bullet points above. Okay, so imagine we have a spring oscillating back and forth in simple harmonic motion. So I'll say like x equals a, at some point x, it'll oscillate back and forth. Cool. So go ahead and draw a free body diagram of what forces are acting on it. Okay, so now that you've done it yourself, it looks like we have the surface pushing up, so Fn. We have gravity pushing down on it, Fg. The spring in this case, because it's to the right of equilibrium, the spring is going to pull back to the left like that. So let's say up and down is the y direction. Let's say horizontal direction is the x direction. And let's say to the right is positive. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the x direction, and we're going to set up an equation for f net. So f net is equal to what force? Let's go ahead and plug in things for f net and what forces, and then we'll check back in on the video. Okay, so in the x direction, we only have one force, spring force, which is pointing to the left. So I'm going to say f net equals negative fs. Let's see, f net we know is ma, spring force is negative kf. Okay, so now let's see what we can plug in. So in this case, is the acceleration constant? Ooh, very interesting. Okay, acceleration for simple harmonic motion is not constant. How I think about it is, if you're here in equilibrium, what is the spring force in equilibrium? So this is just spring force is kx. So that's just going to be k times 0, because it's not displaced. So that's just 0. Well, at this point, let's call it the amplitude. Spring force would just be k. And again, I'm not worrying about signs right now. kx, so k times a which is just Ka, um, and again, you can set that equal to Ma. So at equilibrium, the acceleration, if you plug in, again, if you plug in 0 over here, acceleration will be 0. Well, if you plug in A, acceleration would just be negative Kx over M. Huh, interesting. Okay, so acceleration is not constant. So that means we are going to have to use the idea to calculate. So acceleration changes with position. I want you to think about how we can break that. So we know the acceleration is the We're going to want our equation just because we have an x in it. We're going to want it to deal with position. So acceleration is going to be the second derivative of position with respect to time. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have m times d squared x dt squared equals what? Negative kx. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and manipulate this a little bit. I'm going to divide both sides by m. So that's going to be k over m times x. Okay, 
So what I want to do now, let's go ahead and write down what are the variables in this case. Variables, if I could spell, and what are the constants? So what is changing for this thing oscillating back and forth, and what is staying the same? Okay, so the spring constant k, that is just a constant of the object, so that is just going to be our constant of the spring, that's just the same. The mass of the object is not staying, that is the same. Variables, the position is changing, and again, the time is changing too, we're measuring at different times. So essentially what we want is we want, okay, so we have essentially d squared d, the second derivative of position with respect to time um, squared is going to be negative some constant because k and m are just constants with our position constant. So essentially, we want to, and this is just position, I put t because it's depending on time. So essentially, we want to take the derivative of something twice and get itself back with a constant in front. So the derivative twice, and we essentially get the same thing with a negative sign back. So I want you to look at the previous page and see what works. Okay, if we take the derivative of t squared, essentially we want the same thing with a constant times t squared. That is not what we get back, that's the two. Okay, this one, if we take the derivative of cosine, ooh, that's close. We get negative cosine, but we want a constant in there. We don't have that. E to the t. Okay, we get the same thing, but no negative. So that's not going to work. This one is just go zero, so that's not going to work. Aha! But we got one right here. So we essentially have, we take the derivative twice. We essentially get the same thing, but there is a negative constant in front, which is what we have. The reason why we have two constants in a and omega is because we're taking the derivative twice. Okay? There's a lot to this. Okay, just as an FYI, if you take the derivative of e to the i t twice, let's see, the first derivative of that would be i e to the i t. The second derivative, you could put a constant in there too, would just be i times i e to the i t. And i times i will just be i squared, which is negative 1, e to the i t. So this function would essentially work. And again, you probably have to put a constant up there like a e to the i e to the AIT, something like that. Cool. Okay. So we're going to essentially, again, we'll essentially let x of t equals a cosine omega t. So we're essentially choosing that as a function. So the derivative of twice d squared x dt squared, again, we already found that at the beginning of this, is just negative a omega squared cosine omega t. So we can essentially and we're essentially choosing what we want the position function to be because that works in this scenario. So let's go ahead and plug that in to our video or to our thing over here. Excuse me. So we have negative k over m. x of t is just going to be a cosine omega t. If I can write. Okay. And d squared x dt squared is just going to be this whole thing over here. So that's negative a omega squared cosine of omega t. Okay, let's go ahead and now simplify this whole situation. Okay, so we've got an a on both sides, that cancels out. We've got a cosine omega t on both sides, that cancels out. So we are just left with negative omega squared equals negative k over m. Whoopsies, I can cancel out those negatives too. Cool. So then omega is just going to be square root of k over m. So we just proved the relationship between the angular velocity, or it's called angular frequency, angular velocity, or you could call it angular frequency, and k and m for an object oscillating in simple harmonic motion. And again, we were choosing this to be our equation for x of t, because then when we take the derivative of twice, we still have, we need two constants in there when we're taking the derivative of twice. Okay, so now let's go ahead and prove what is the period of a spring oscillating. So we know, let me write this down again, we just proved that omega equals square root of k over m. Okay, so we know that the equation for period is just 2 pi over omega. So that's one of those givens for simple harmonic motion. And again, just as a little side note, if you want to prove it, I know omega angular velocity is just change in theta over change in time. If something is going around 
uh, sorry, something going around once, it goes through two pi radian. The time for something to go around once is just a period, so we know omega equals two pi over t, or we could manipulate that and say t equals two pi over omega. Cool, so just a little side note. So we can now plug in omega. So omega is square root of k over n, which is just simply for that. Period is just two pi root m over k. So this right here is the period um, of a mass range. So again, it could be something oscillating side to side, back and forth in the x direction, or it could be something oscillating up and down in the y direction. So again, or heck, it doesn't even matter what direction it's oscillating, but this is just the equation that you'll use for a mass spring system. And we derived it. There's a lot of fun math in that. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions on this video, feel free to write your questions in the comments section uh, below. Thanks.